Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a quick tip to improve your target motion analysis. Now you're saying, uh, what are you referring to? Well, I'm simply referring to uh, whenever you have a passive track, it's going to be to try to identify where the passive track is, as well as key details about that passive track. Now one of the things we have here, uh, so you can see we have a little Los Angeles uh, just sort of chilling down here, and uh, we've detected a passive track. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the way passive sonar works, basically we're listening. Uh, whenever we listen, the only thing I can tell you is the direction the sound is coming from. And to a lesser extent, there's actually some pretty cool electronic magic we can do to it to basically identify the speed of a contact, which is trip, uh, pretty cool if you ask me. It's called demodulated noise. And of course, uh, we can determine, uh, is it getting away? Is it turning left? Is it going right? But that's all we can really identify about a contact. So what we need to do is we need to improve the quality of my contact, my estimated position of this, somehow without actually popping up to the surface and uh, taking a look or using something like active sonar, or active radar along those lines. Now you're wondering, um, now why is this uh, contact uh, bouncing around so much here? And the reason it is, is my little TMA officer, target motion analysis, is basically trying to estimate the path that this particular contact is making. Now there's a bunch of things we can do. Uh, like I mentioned a moment ago, we've already identified the speed of the target. Uh, the reason we did that is basically, if we know how many blades a propeller has, we can basically listen to the swish, 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 and divide by the number of blades to identify the turns per knot, if you have it on the page, and you can actually get a really good estimate of the speed. That's awesome, because if we know speed, we've eliminated one of the three variables that we need for the purposes of being able to identify where a target is. Now notice, my contact is getting progressively better. Um, I now know that it's a large crude kanger. This is a very, 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 very big ship. And I know it's chugging along. It's got, we've got the course, basically, which I'm actually sort of impressed that we have the course. If we have course and speed, we also have position. But um, again, you, <laughs> there's my guy basically trying to work out the estimations. So there are a couple of good things that we know right away here. And uh, the first one, of course, is the fact that as we're swimming down here, we know what we can hear in the distances we can hear things. So if we ever picked up a target that was over here, for example, um, that's just mechanically not possible because we literally can't hear it. So we can eliminate that ambiguity. Uh, the other thing, of course, we can consider is if he's right here, um, we'd probably have a very, very good idea of how quickly he's moving. So the question is, how do we improve the quality of this track, like I was saying earlier, without going active? And the answer to that is actually very, very simple. And this is a, one of the things I love that I picked up from Dangerous Waters years ago. All we have to do is change our own course. Now you're sitting there going, wait, what? Now remember, if I take a quick bearing here, you know, and a couple moments later I take another bearing and it's like this, and I take another bearing like this, you notice how we're just getting a bunch of parallel lines here? That's going to mean that we're not 100% sure exactly. Of course, we know it's a relative position here, so we could do something like that and try to kind of work it out, but it's still we're not 100% sure where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order my vessel, go ahead and pause for a second here, to go ahead and execute a turn. Now, there's a bunch of different ways philosophically that uh, people like to approach this, again, depending on your experience with submarining and, of course, the quality of your acoustic gear, which on this submarine is fantastic. Um, this is one step removed from the Los Angeles, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, and uh, currently our course is uh, 86 degrees. So what we want to do is we want to make at least a 45-degree turn away from our present course. Now, we can turn into it. That's fine. But people are like, wait, why would you not turn into it? That seems to make sense to me. Well, the thing you have to remember with the sub here is I have a long wire trailing behind me. For those of you who have missed that before, let me open that sucker up real quick. I'm going to close that. I don't need it. But the thing with that long wire that's basically being pulled behind me right now is the fact that my submarine can block it. So if I turn towards him, my wire would get blocked by my own sub and then I couldn't hear anything. So uh, that's not going to work so well for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to order up a new course here. I'm going to press F3. I remember 80, uh, what were we, 86 degrees originally. So we're just going to go forward a little bit and then we're going to execute a turn. All right. So I'm going to yell at the, uh, my chief of my watch here to basically uh, take us up another 300 and then 45 to the right. Uh, whoa. We don't have a right and left in a boat. Uh, this would not be 45 to the right. This would be uh, 45 to starboard. Let's see here. We want to go about 86 degrees. That's about 235 meters. And then we're just going to go ahead and take a turn here. And again, not an aggressive turn. And then we're going to run in that direction about half a kilometer like that. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause. So my sub is uh, going to start executing my turn. I'm actually going to stretch this out a little bit. Um, um, my, <laughs> my dive officer, my uh, helmsman, uh, got a little aggressive there. I said, we want to go a quarter of a mile. Then you want to turn. But he just grabbed the wheel and cranked it over kind of a thing like that. So now my sub's going to go ahead and execute a turn. 
which now is going to cause his bearing. This bearing now will sweep like this relative to us. Now, of course, absolute to us, you can see that the target remains in exactly the same position because, you know, we're doing the math, so to speak. Now, what's going to happen is as we start to put some distance on him, and now that we're traveling at a different, you're going to notice the ambiguity of my target is going to start to shift. Now, notice, by the way, I'm picking this up from the total array as the total array is now catching up to us. And you can see for a couple moments there, we had a very, very, very confident bearing. So what we can do now is if we really, really, really want to go all out here, and now this is one of those uh, fun little strategies that we used to see in the dangerous water days, is you could actually build yourself a little miniature ladder like this. And what that miniature ladder will do is as we take those turns, we'll get a better idea of where the target is. So we'll come speed up time here. Oh, oh ta-da! <laughs> Notice as soon as we are broke about 90 degrees there, we have a really, really confident, confident position on this target here. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to start thinking about sneaking up on this guy for an attack, we could actually turn ourselves around. And as we go around here, uh, we'll be even more confident of the position of the target. Look at that. We were very, very confident for a second there. And now one of the things I like to do is if you get something that's this confident, you can actually right click on a target and say a mark position. And basically what that will do is that will cause that opposition to be known. Oh, we had him perfectly for a second there. Give it just a moment for the TMA guy to do his math. Come on. Come on, TMA man. Give me something a little more confident. And now we have a pretty darn good turn. So I'm going to go ahead and turn with him again. And you can see, look at how accurate our position estimation on this guy is now. And we went from a giant orange line to something that is a very, very small. This is more than enough for a torpedo shot for us. You know, if I went to grab my guy right now and shift up one and click on him, you're gonna notice, well, sure, we'll take the shot kind of a thing. Now, let me give you a quick little piece of advice here. I'll just from playing this game for a little while. Um, when I go to do this, if I were to actually take the shot, you're going to notice as my torpedo travels, my position on my knowledge of his position will change and the torpedo will do a funny little torpedo dance. I'll show you what it looks like when it happens. All right. See, my torpedoes are going pretty straight here. But if I actually notice, you see us as wire in the bottom of my sub here. I'm actually guiding this torpedo from my submarine. So if the target suddenly changes position or gains position or loses position, oh, look at how confident we are in its position. Look at that. And again, it's all because of those little turns that we executed in order to make it so it was a little bit easier to lock on. So my torpedo's on the way. It's uh, obviously going to be a pretty long journey for this torpedo to get there. But because I have such a confident position on him, I'm pretty sure once we go active with this torpedo, it's uh, going to surprise this guy quite a bit. And again, I don't know what he's doing in the middle of the Atlantic here, and I don't know why we're shooting a torpedo at him. But uh, that's beyond uh, what we need to worry about here. Notice, by the way, that we're actually leading this position, and everything you've seen so far has all been completely done passively. This guy has no idea he's been launched on. Now, here's another really fun, um, I like to call this a command trick, but if you notice here how the torpedo is rocking back and forth, it's um, actually searching for the target here. And now uh, one of the fun things you'll see is it'll suddenly latch onto the target, and if we had any doubt in our mind where the target is, we will immediately know exactly where it is. Now, the interesting thing here is I can actually turn this torpedo by ordering at an actual waypoint. Check this out. <laughs> so now the torpedo will actually take a turn there and um, go ahead and continue its track. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. He's also wasting a ton of energy here. So let me go give him a little push here. There we go. And again, this is one of the great things about wire torpedoes is that you can do silly things like this. All right, sneaking in. Going to zoom out a little bit here. All right, so in just a moment, he's going to go back to his own tracking device right there. And oh, what a clean hit. What a clean hit. Now, remember, everything you just saw was out without me putting my periscope up. All of these things were done completely passively. Identification, position, all that. Just by adding a little teeny tiny turn, kind of taking a different course for a little while, that improves drastically. Enjoy.